When multiplying fractions, we know that we're going to multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then reduce if possible. There is a process to follow when we multiply rational expressions. I'm going to take a look at my question first, and any binomials that I see, I'm going to bracket them, and then I'm going to see if any of them are factorable. So is there a greatest common factor that we can remove, and then can we factor it further as a difference of squares? We can see in the first numerator, we can remove a greatest common factor, so I've done that, and then there is no difference of squares here, so that's fully factored. And then this binomial doesn't have a difference of squares or a greatest common factor. Factor. And then once we've done that, we're going to determine the non-permissible values. So we can see in this term, x cannot equal 0. And in this factor, x cannot equal positive 6. So we've got those listed there. I've now multiplied my numerators. So I'm going to multiply a monomial times a monomial. So 2 times 5 is 10. And when we multiply powers with the same base, the base stays the same and we add the exponents. And this is my only binomial, so we're going to just put that there. And then in the denominator, we have 15x times there would be a 1 there is just 15x, and then we have x minus 6. Now we're going to simplify this so we can see that there's the same bracket here, bracket stays together, so those are going to divide out, and then we can treat this like a fraction similar to what we did in simplifying and reduce that. So our binomials are gone, they're going to divide out to get 1, and you can see that when we divide each numerator and denominator monomial by 5x, it simplifies down to 2x divided by 3. Now you're going to notice in the procedure it says to divide out common factors as the third step. Here's a quicker way of going about this. With multiplication, I know I'm going to be multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators and then reducing. So a quicker way is I'm going to first start by looking for the binomials. I can see I have the same binomial in both the numerator and the denominator, so those are going to divide out. I can see that I'm going to divide out 1x by 1x, and then I can also see that if I go 5 divided by 5, I get 1. If I go 15 divided by 5, I'm going to get 3. So I can cancel out the common factors and then take a look at what's left. So this is gone, now this is gone. So we have 2x on top, and then we have a 3 in the denominator. And voila, that is our final answer. Let's try another one. So the first thing I'm going to do is bracket all of my binomials, and then I'm going to see if any of them are factorable. So I see that I can remove a greatest common factor from the first numerator, and I also see that this is a difference of squares. So I'm going to set up my conjugates, one is a plus, one is a minus. I can remove a greatest common factor from my first denominator as well as my second denominator. So I've gone ahead and done that. And then when I take a look at the brackets, we can do nothing further with this bracket or those brackets or those brackets, but I see that I have another difference of squares here. So we need to keep factoring. So I'm going to again set up my conjugates, one is a plus, one is a minus, and then we're going to factor that. Now I'm going to do my non-permissible values next. So I can see that in this factor y cannot equal negative 1. In this factor y cannot equal positive 1. So y cannot be positive or negative 1. That's represented there. There's nothing I can do with this because there's no variable. And then in this factor I can see that y cannot equal positive 1 quarter. So if you have trouble seeing that go off to the margin of your paper over here and we're going to say that factor cannot equal 0 and then algebraically you're going to isolate the variable. Step one is done, step two is done. Step three is the fun one. Now we get to divide out common factors. So I'm going to start with the binomials. I'm going to look for any brackets that are the same, top and bottom. So remember, one has to be in the numerator, one has to be in the denominator, and then by dividing those, we get one. So that bracket is gonna divide out with that one. And then I can also see that this one plus y, that's the same as y plus one. So then we can divide that one out with that one. And then my last bracket, I have a positive 1 and a negative 1. I have a negative y and a positive y. So remember, if both signs are flipped, when we divide those out, we end up factoring out that negative 1. Now if I take a look at my monomials, so I've got a 4 divided by a 2, so I know that when I divide 4 by 2, I'm going to be left with a 2 up here, and then even at this point, you can always simplify to see what you have. So I've got a 2y cubed times a negative 1, so it's going to be negative 2y cubed on top, and I have a 5 in the denominator. 
And then once you've combined everything that's left in the numerator, everything that's left in the denominator, take one final look just to make sure that nothing will cancel or reduce further. If not, you have your final answer. All of our bracketed binomials ended up canceling out in this particular question, but the directions here say to leave your, the answer in factored form, which is often what it asks you to do. So don't distribute in whatever's in front, you can just leave it in factored form. Now, one final note, we are simplifying. Simplify means cancel out all of your common factors. We are not solving. This is not an equation because there is no equal sign and there is no seconds value to it. So in this case, just make sure you're aware if it's simplify, we're canceling out common factors. We cannot say what y equals. We don't have enough information to do that. Now remember when we're dividing fractions, we're going to change the division sign to multiplication and we're going to reciprocate that second fraction. So instead of 5 sevenths, flip it, we get 7 over 5 and then we're back to multiplication. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then reduce if possible. So again, notice this is an expression. This is not an equation because we do not have an equal sign with another side to it. So we cannot get the value of x. All we can do is simplify. I'm going to begin the same way. I'm going to bracket all of my binomials and then see if we can factor them. So I begin by removing a greatest common factor. And then I'm going to take a look at the brackets just to make sure there's no differences of squares that we may have missed in there. And there isn't, so we are fully factored. Now, because I'm dividing, I'm going to change division to multiplication and I'm going to reciprocate that second fraction. So the first fraction stays as is, division becomes multiplication, and we flip this. Now, the second step is to deal with our non-permissible values. You're going to notice this is our original denominator containing a variable, and then when we flip it, we also have a new denominator containing factors with variables. So the only difference between multiplication and division now is you have to watch the restriction. We're going to state the restriction on all original denominators and all new denominators. So we can see in this factor, x cannot equal positive 1 half, so I just want to wrote it up here. In this factor, x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal negative 1. We don't have to worry about the 16 because there's no variable there. All right, step three, now comes the fun part, divide out common factors. So I can see x plus 1 on top divides out with x plus 1 on the bottom. Those are going to give us 1. Uh, we can also see that 1x on the bottom will divide out with 1 on top, leaving us just with the 1 in the numerator. And then I can also see that 10 divided by 16, both of those are divisible by 2. So if I go 10 divided by 2, I'm going to get 5. And if I go 16 divided by 2, I'm going to get 8. So we can even start canceling and then see what we're left with. Now at this point, we may have to divide out more common factors, but I can see my only binomial is in the numerator, so there's nothing to divide it out with in the denominator. Denominator. And there's also no number other than 1 that will divide evenly into 5 and 8. And my only variable in the monomial is on top. There's nothing in the denominator that that would cancel with. So in this case, that is finished. And then this is factored form. Now you could distribute this in if the directions didn't specify and just make sure that it's equivalent. So we would have 10x squared minus 5x divided by 8. That is an equivalent simplified value. So either way, unless it specifies, would work. There's our final answer. Let's try our last one here. And again, all we can do is simplify. We cannot state the value of n because we don't have an equation. We have an expression. So I'm going to begin by bracketing all binomials, and then we're going to see if any of them are factorable. I began by removing the greatest common factor. In my second numerator, I don't have a greatest common factor, but I recognize I have a difference of squares. Those are both perfect squares. So I'm going to set up my conjugates for that numerator. And then I can also remove a greatest common factor here. Now I'm going to take a look at the brackets and I'm going to say is any of those brackets factorable further? So none of them are a difference of squares and that's all we can do with a binomial. So we are fully factored. Now because we are dividing we're going to change that to multiplication and then we're going to reciprocate the second fraction. Now in terms of non-permissible values I need to do all original denominators and all new denominators. So I can see there's no variable here. In this particular one, so you want to imagine this, this cannot equal zero. So I'm imagining this negative 3 goes over and becomes positive 3, and I divide out the 2. So n cannot equal positive 3 halves. n cannot equal 0 in this one. n cannot equal positive 3 halves. And then the same thing here. Imagine we move over the 1, it becomes negative 1, divide out the 5, negative 1 fifth. 
move over the negative one, it becomes positive one, divide out the five, it becomes positive one fifth. So I just went up to the top here and I've listed them. There are four non-permissible values in this expression. Now, normally we do write these in numerical order. So for example, over here, I'd go negative one, zero, one half. And then here we would have negative one fifth, zero, et cetera. But I put them in order just so you can see where they're coming from. And if you cannot do this in your head, then you're gonna go over to the margin of your paper, set the factors so it cannot equal zero, and then isolate the variable. We're going to start dividing out common factors. So I can see that five N plus one on top cancels with five N plus one on the bottom. I can see that a six in the numerator will cancel with a six on the denominator. So make sure you're only canceling top and bottom. And then let's see what we've got now. So we're going to multiply what's left in the numerator. So two times N cubed is two N cubed. And in the denominator, we still have each of those factors. And then just take a look. We have no more factors that will cancel in terms of the binomials. And this is my only monomial other than one down here. So that is fully simplified. This is factored form. Now just be aware if the directions don't specify, we could foil this denominator out. And when we do that, we would end up with a trinomial. And again, bracket the trinomial. We cannot cancel because you're ripping apart the body. So this is the final answer in factored form, but this is what it would be equivalent to.